In this next exercise, we're going to solve equations, in particular linear equations. We also have systems of nonlinear equations that we can solve with Python as well, but we'll save those for the subsequent uh, problems. Just to give an overview of this, we have problem number one, which is going to be linear equations. I'll show a couple different ways of solving those. We also have problem number two, which is going to be a set of uh, nonlinear equations <coughs> as well, where we have, uh, you know, these. Uh, nonlinear equations we're going to use to find a couple of the solutions, these four solutions. And if you go down to problem three, this is going to be more engineering specific. We're going to solve a readily Kwong equation. That's just going to be one equation, one unknown, but just a little bit more complicated for a nonlinear expression. And then um, a, a vapor liquid equilibrium. So those four we're going to solve. We're just going to start with problem number one here on solving linear equations. If you'd like to follow along, you can come here to the schedule for CHE 263. And if you click the schedule, you'll come to the homeworks. And in particular, probably the easiest way to follow along with this is um, through the Google Colab link. It'll just open up this link in your web browser, and you can use Python without having to install anything locally on your computer. And if you'd like to get the source code for this as well, uh, here is the GitHub repository, and this is going to be homework number three. Okay, so let's go back to the problem of solving linear sets of equations. Here's a linear set of equations, x0 and x1, and we have two equations and two unknowns. We can define, uh, you know, vectors, uh, one-dimensional arrays, in Python is a list in this case, or you can do it as a NumPy array. So there's B defined in Python. Uh, you can also uh, define it as this NumPy array. Um, and so there's advantages of doing either one, but in this case, you can do it for, use it either one for this exercise. You can also do a matrix, a two-dimensional array, um, and you do that with a Python list um, as shown here or with a NumPy array, you just wrap it in the np.array, open and close parentheses, and so you can define your um, arrays A and B. Okay, the A is going to be the matrix on the left-hand side, and the B is on the right. In this case, we can uh, either find the solution by inverting A and multiplying it by B with the np.dot, dot, the dot product of the two. And so that would be um, like this source code right here. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that in here and uh, we'll run it. Okay, so let me just go ahead and uh, paste that uh, code in and we will run okay, this first exercise. I'll show you a more efficient way of finding uh, that solution. Okay, so solution method number two is to use the np.linalg.solve function. Okay, so very similar as before, but it'll do, uh, it'll take a different approach to solving this that's, um, you know, more efficient than inverting A and then multiplying it by B. And so in this case, I already have A defined. Okay, if I just print that out and B is already defined as well. And then if I just want to solve this with the mplinalg.solve a comma b, okay, and then if I print x, then it'll also give me the same solution. Okay, you can access individual uh, values from this array. So for example, if I did a zero comma one, okay, that's um, not going to work because it's a list in Python and so if I do a 0 1 I'm going to access um, the first row uh, second column of that matrix but if I convert a into a numpy okay I'll just do NP array I'll convert that into a numpy array then it gives me some more convenient notation okay you can just do 0 comma 1 instead of using the list way of, of accessing that. Um, you can also do this with uh, NumPy as well. Okay, so there's just one advantage of using uh, NumPy array just in accessing those values, but let's talk about how to slice some of these values as well. Let's say I just want to get the very first 
element of that solution, I do x0. And uh, if I want to get the second one, I would do x1. If I want to get the very last one, now this is only a list of two, but if I want to do the last one, it would be x minus one. And then it would go back to the beginning, and then uh, before the beginning is the last one. So uh, I could also do x minus two, and that would be the second to last one, which would be the first one. Okay, so there's ways that you can access uh, the different values from your uh, solution. Okay, um, let's go on to solving uh, this one right here. Let's find the system of equations um, for this uh, bigger uh, five by five, five by five matrix. So this is going to be in uh, in array notation. Okay, I have the A and the B. And if I want to make this a NumPy array instead of just a Python list, I can just wrap it in the array. Okay, and uh, let me do that for B as well. And we'll show you how to just access certain columns of this. Okay, I'll just print A. Okay, there it is. And then if I just want to get, for example, just the all of the rows just for my first column, then I can just print out this column of values. Okay, and if I wanted to just get all of, um, let's say, the first row, all of the column values, then I can get this one as well. And then you can also do, you know, one to four, for example, just taking a subset of those. But if you just leave out the numbers and it just says do all of them, okay, and um, Okay, or you could do like, uh, you know, one to negative one. Okay, if you want to just access, uh, you know, um, just this subset. So you can mix and match. You can slice this array. If you have a problem that has, you know, much larger matrix, but you just want to get a solution to a subset of that, you can uh, use this to redefine your array. Okay, but let's go ahead and just solve this with. Uh, solve this with the uh, you know similar to the one above. Um, in this case, we're going to just use the we're going to invert a. I'll just do inverse a is um, linalg dot inverse a. Okay, and then if I just print that um, inverse a, then we're going to see I took the inverse and there's the there's the solution that first uh, first matrix. So we're solving this with a x um, x equals b and then we just take uh, a inverse on both sides and uh, this is going to be the identity matrix so identity matrix times anything is just going to be that same thing so then I have x equals a inverse times b. So I'm just solving that by rearranging this and and so now I have a inverse now I'm going to calculate x so it's going to be inverse a times b but I can't do that directly so I'm going to need to use the np dot dot and I'll just multiply those two together and then we'll print x comment this out. Okay, so there's my x solution for uh, the system of equations. Now we can also just print the last value of x. Okay, there it is, the very last one. Okay, or a subset of those as I showed how to uh, slice those vectors or arrays. Now let's go and use um, the other method of solving this as well. So if we don't want to have to invert A, we can just do np.linalg.solve. And that's going to be A comma B. And that should give us the same solution as before. Okay, so the next exercise, we're going to go on to using fsolve. I'll just show a preview of this because we're sol we solved that same set of equations as before. If you wanted to solve this with a nonlinear equation solver, you can do that. Um, 
you can do that with uh, fsolve as this to find this new function um, and then uh, use fsolve this is a scipy solver okay and and solve it as we did before but just different way of, of solving it okay this is going to be less efficient for linear sets of equations so it's better to use something like uh, this function right here if you have a large set of linear equations if you have a small set of linear equations it really doesn't matter which one you use okay so I'll post this uh, solution video and then follow it up with uh, solving problem number two